Hey, welcome to another episode of the Project U podcast. I am your host, Mitchell MD. And the title of this show, this episode, is really focusing on the value of your life. I'm sure it's worth well more than $100, but that title is there just to get your attention and hopefully to get you to take some action. I want to share in this episode some real life stories from some patients and friends of mine, and then I'm going to wrap it up on a personal note uh, of something that uh, has really flipped my world upside down. And so let's jump in. The fact is that really there's nothing that's certain in life except for change. Time passes quickly and change happens all around us each and every day. And like it or not, there's little we can do about it other than enjoy the moment while you can. And one day it's just going to be another faded memory. I don't know who wrote that little phrase there, but it certainly has a lot of, uh, of value and drives home the point here. Would you actually pull out your wallet and peel off a hundred bucks if it could save your life? And I want to share with you uh, a typical story. And unfortunately this happens more than many people want to admit or realize. And I had the opportunity to work with some athletes recently. And uh, some of the people that I was training with look just like me physiologically, relatively same build, relatively same Watts on the bike, same lifestyle habits and everything. But I was a little bit alarmed to learn that one of my friends uh, and colleagues had to go to the emergency department for chest pain and um, went through uh, you know a, a brief workup and and things came back relatively normal and stable. He had some blood work done, an EKG and a and a chest X-ray, and it was felt to be really relatively low risk for any heart disease or heart problems. And uh, so he was discharged and sent home, no big deal. And uh, I just noticed that he seemed ill at ease on some of our longer rides or some of our more intense workouts and uh, began to kind of pressure him on it and uh, just talked about the logistics of getting checked for heart disease and some other options besides just the standard EKG or stress test. And he talked over his, with his wife and saw his regular doctor and had a treadmill stress test, which is a commonly performed test. I don't want to completely bash it, but the reality is that this test is not sensitive enough by itself to really pick up what it's designed to pick up. And so what we're looking for are blockages in blood vessels, and these blockages can cause a heart attack. Obviously, something that anybody wants to avoid, particularly a triathlete who's in their mid-40s. And so uh, we hashed it out, and I suggested that he spend a little bit of money out of his pocket uh, and get a cardiac CT. And what this test does is it's a CAT scan. It literally takes just a few minutes to complete, and it looks for calcium in the arteries around the heart, the coronary arteries. These are the blood vessels that give the heart its blood supply. When those are pinched or blocked or plugged, uh, the result is chest pain, shortness of breath, sweating, nauseousness, a full-blown heart attack, or unfortunately for about 50% of people who have blockage in their coronary arteries, the presenting symptom is death. And so it's <clears throat> obviously really hard to ignore that one, no doubt. But anyways, <clears throat> after some persuasion that, uh, you know, looking at the the gear on his bike that I knew he really could easily afford and really had no, at least in my mind, any rational justification for not going through with the test. And so he did. And uh, lo and behold, he did have some blockage there and uh, went ahead and saw a cardiologist, had some interventions done and is, is back at it full tilt without any uh, worse for the wear. I don't want to get into the whole controversy around heart catheterizations and technology because there are some newer technologies out there that are much more uh, reliable and allow more precise decision making than than cardiac cath. One is uh, intravascular ultrasound, which you can look up if you want. But this is not a, this is a podcast is not a lecture for medical professionals. It's for the triathlete. And so, what I just want to bring to light is that. You know, if you have any worry or concerns about your heart health, maybe there's a family history there, maybe you were a smoker in a former life, maybe you're just new to the sport or you're a little bit on the heavy side, um, maybe you just, despite your, your your love for the sport, you still eat a standard American diet, pounding down burgers and fries. I've talked on previous podcasts about the half-life of the oil in a French fry is 66 days. And so there's a variety of things that we do to our bodies that stress our heart, stress our vascular system. And just because 
a person doesn't have any symptoms, a person's able to to uh, you know run a, a six thirty mile and crank out three hundred watts on the bike for a prolonged period of time. That does not mean that they don't have the potential to have some issues with their heart. And so I encourage you to partner with your health care practitioner to talk about any issues or concerns you have, and and just to bring up the screening test. It's literally a uh, hundred bucks, and it has potential to save a life. As the saying goes, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And I sort of felt a, a little bit taken back by that, that I've certainly recommended quite a few people to have this test. And I hadn't yet done it myself. I consider myself you know, healthy, um, monitor cholesterol and, and blood pressure and, and a variety of things. And blood pressure certainly crept up with age. But uh, I thought, well, I'll just get the test done. It's 100 bucks, and uh, it'll give me a peace of mind. And so I did. It was simple. Met with a nurse practitioner, did some pre-screening stuff, got the test done, took about five minutes, got a preliminary result after the cardiologist sort of eyeballed it before I went out the door, and uh, got my little piece of paper that said your score is zero. And the scoring goes between zero and three, 400 or 500, depending on the institution. But zero is essentially good, not perfect. There's no perfect in, in, in medicine, but an excellent test. And so I was very pleased. I came home and told my wife about it and, and uh, my family and, and everybody was like, you know, that's cool. Great. Nice. Nice to know. So what? And so another week went by and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a little bit, um, uh, life changing for me here as I share this, but a week went by and I got the formal result typed up nice little pamphlet with a you know brochure and all this stuff in there. And, highlighted in yellow was you must see a specialist promptly and what the scan found even though it was looking specifically at the coronary arteries the blood vessels around the heart is found that uh, there was enlargement or dilation of the aorta which is the blood vessel that comes off the top of the heart and so if you've ever heard the word aneurysm if you ever had a family member or friend with an aneurysm or anybody die of an aneurysm you know that it's uh, the, the connotation of the word for those that know what it entails it was really quite frightening, and I felt myself, you know, break into a cold sweat. Uh, it was early morning, um, and just totally was taken back in shock by this. And I thought, well, you know, maybe the, all the rational things that go on when somebody gets bad news, maybe it was an error, maybe it was some technical flaw, I'm trying to justify a variety of other things that maybe uh, were a factor. And so I got an echo, which is an ultrasound, a look at the heart specifically, and indeed it confirmed the CT results that uh, there's some aneurysmal dilatation or enlargement, which has a huge impact on life in general in terms of blood pressure, in terms of activity, in terms of limitations of things that can and can't be done. And so uh, the value of the test, at least in my setting, goes well beyond the $100. I may not die of a heart attack, but had I not known that the aneurysm was there. The natural history of these things is that they grow in size until they blow. And when they blow, a person is usually dead instantly or dead within 24 hours. So it does open up a window of opportunity to try to slow the growth, try to alter some, some lifestyle things uh, to really aggressively keep blood pressure low and hopefully extend uh, um, my life somewhat. So it's, it's just been a sort of a slap in the face. I'm still reeling from this I'm just a few weeks into this whole process of meeting with a uh, aortic specialist coming up here in the near future. And uh, I'll be back to share a little bit more with that, with uh, you, the audience here. So just, uh, I'm not, this isn't a pity party. This isn't uh, a podcast about my life. It's about project you and your life and achieving optimal life. And so I really encourage you to talk to your doctor about this test. It's a cardiac CT test looking for calcium Many health institutions, you can get this test without a physician order. Uh, in my case, I just called up a place that was uh, not that far from where I work, and they had the test. It was 100 bucks out of pocket, and I paid it, and uh, it certainly has changed my life and uh, really helped uh, shape and help me reinterpret everything from top to bottom. So with that, I want to wrap things up. If you have any questions, certainly you can reach out to me. Twitter is the best place at Dr. Mitchell MD. No punctuation or periods or anything. Or email at Mitchell at Mitchell MD. I check that a little bit less frequently these days. I've got a lot on my plate, as you can imagine. But uh, uh, there's plenty of resources on the blog on the latest post. Uh, it's called Life on a Dime. And you can also find some more about. Uh, uh, the previous post on the heart scan there with some video. I'll be uploading some of my personal images if you're curious to see what it looks like from a, um, 
from a live patient perspective. As always, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.